Thank you for your interest in Medicare cost reporting. You have access to part three in a four-part webinar series discussing Medicare cost reporting for critical access hospitals. These webinars are designed for individuals who may not be familiar with the Medicare cost report and are hoping to learn more about it. For additional information, please access parts one, two, and four of the cost reporting webinar series as well as other focused educational webinars sponsored by the Wisconsin Office of Rural Health. This webinar today will cover the Worksheet B series of the Medicare Cost Report. In the last two webinar series, you covered the S series as well as the Worksheet A series. Today, we are going to build off of that and talk about how the costs that were determined on Worksheet A are now stepped down from the overhead departments to the revenue producing and non-reimbursable cost centers on your cost report. In today's webinar, we will cover how these costs from Worksheet A are stepped down utilizing statistics. We will discuss some helpful tips to consider as you prepare and review your B-1 worksheet. Lastly, we will talk about two methods that a critical access hospital can use to allocate these costs. B-1 is where we take we begin that portion of the worksheet with our costs from worksheet A that are our allowable costs and we step them down utilizing statistics to the revenue and non-reimbursable department of the entity. Costs cannot be allocated to an earlier cost center and we will show you an example of this in a couple of slides. In addition, the order of allocation cannot be changed. Additional cost centers may be added by fragmenting specific cost centers but it does not change the overall order of the allocations. Helpful tip to consider when reviewing and preparing your cost report is to consider the last time that the statistics were updated in your cost report. For example, square footage. Has the organization evaluated and updated the square footage of the cost centers on an annual basis? If there have been any additional building projects completed or renovations made to the current facility, have those changes been incorporated into the square footage on your cost report? A second tip is to consider if there are any specific cost centers that should be fragmented to more appropriately allocate costs to the remaining departments utilizing a different statistic. For example, one cost center that is oftentimes fragmented is buildings and fixtures. If there are new buildings added during a period, it may be more advantageous to fragment that and reflect it as a separate cost center versus lumping it in with all other building and fixtures and having all square footage allocate those specific costs. Another cost center that is oftentimes fragmented is admin in general. Fragmenting that into cost centers of communications, data processing, and business offices oftentimes may be favorable for the organization to utilize a different statistic to allocate those costs on a more reasonable method to the specific revenue producing departments that those areas service. This next slide provides just an example of the most common overhead departments where costs are allocated. Capital and related costs that include depreciation and interest expense generally are allocated to the remaining departments utilizing square footage. Employee benefits generally are allocated utilizing salaries or gross salaries. Admin in general, which is line five on the cost report, generally is allocated utilizing accumulated costs. Plant and maintenance utilizes square footage. Laundry is generally allocated utilizing patient days or can also be utilized on a laundry pounds statistic. Housekeeping is allocated on square footage or a time study. Dietary can be allocated on patient days or meals. Cafeteria utilizes salaries or FTEs to allocate the various costs. Nursing and administration utilizes nursing salaries or nursing FTEs. And lastly, medical records utilizes gross patient service revenue. When preparing or reviewing your B-1, ask yourself, are you allocating costs to any department that do not utilize or receive these services. One example would be cafeteria. If the hospital or your organization also has an offsite rural health clinic, do the employees of that rural health clinic utilize the cafeteria? If not, 
you want to verify that the statistics that you're utilizing to allocate cafeteria do not incorporate a statistic for that rural health clinic. Another example would be housekeeping. Do the housekeeping staff clean the gift shop or the ambulance garage? Is their nursery receiving an allocation of dietary costs? These are all examples uh, that you can utilize to when you're reviewing and preparing your B-1 to consider if there are cost centers that are receiving an allocation of costs that do not need to be, that do not receive that service. There are two methods that a critical access hospital may choose to use to allocate costs. They may be utilizing the simplified method or the standard recommendation method. As you see here on this slide, the cost center department on the left reflects then the simplified method or the standard recommendation. Utilizing the simplified method is oftentimes less, takes less time and takes less cost to accumulate the various statistics used in the cost report. Your organization would have elected one of these methods likely already. In order to change the method, it requires pre-approval that must be received no later than 90 days prior to the end of the cost reporting period, unless this is the first year or period that the organization is filing the cost report as a critical access hospital. Once elected under the simplified method, the organization must continue to use this method for no less than three years, unless there's a change in the ownership during that period of time. A couple of common considerations to think about when evaluating the simplified and the standard recommendations on this slide. For building and fixtures for movable equipment, when you are evaluating your square footage, we recommend that you update this on an annual basis and that it should be based on the weighted average of the date of the changes. So for example, if there is a new building that was put in service partway through the period, a weighted average must be computed to weight the square footage of that new building for the date that it was placed in service compared to the total date of the reporting period out of 365 days, more than likely if you were filing based on a fiscal year or a calendar year, unless for some reason you are doing an extended period return. I'm sorry, an extended period cost report. Another thing to note is that there are actually two square footage statistics. Gross square footage, which includes your hallways and your common areas, as well as a net square footage, which excludes the hallways and common areas. An organization may consider and want to evaluate both methods to see which, which is more advantageous in terms of how it reflects costs within your cost report to the revenue producing departments of the hospital. You do need to utilize the same statistic consistently throughout the cost report. So if you utilize gross square footage, you need to be consistent and utilize it throughout in your statistics or utilize the net and utilize it throughout. If you are utilizing the standard recommendation for movable equipment for depreciation expense, be sure that this ties out to your trial balance. If you also, when evaluating depreciation expense, verify that this includes any interest or insurance related to those capital costs, and those need to be included in the statistic and in the amount that you're tying back out to your trial balance as well. For employee benefits, if you are utilizing the gross salaries on the standard recommendation, be sure that this reconciles back to your trial balance, as well as that it incorporates any adjustments for A6 reclassifications on your worksheet A series, and that it also takes into consideration any, is adjusted for any non-allowable employee benefits that were removed as part of an A8 adjustment. So if there were benefits removed on A8-2 for professional wages that were removed from the cost report, the benefits associated with that should also be removed and should not be impacting your statistics utilized on B-1. If you are utilizing FTEs for cafeteria under the standard recommendation, we recommend that this agree back to your annual payroll reports and that you challenge yourself to determine whether or not FTEs within specific departments are utilizing that service. Again, we'll go back to the example of an off-site location RHC. Do they need to have a statistic for allocating cafeteria costs to that cost center? 
if they do not utilize that cough center, there should be no FTE statistic reflected on that line when allocating costs of the cafeteria. When utilizing laundry pounds under the standard recommendation for laundry and linen, we recommend that you accumulate the information annually so that the statistic represents the entire year of operation. And if you are utilizing a third party, make sure you are obtaining the full statistic of pounds, not pieces of laundry processed. If you are utilizing meals for dietary under the standard recommendation, again, we recommend that you accumulate this annually so that statistics represent the entire year of operation. And the statistic should not exceed patient days times three meals per day. If it does, there are likely items included within your meal count that do not equate to a full meal equivalent, and we recommend that this be reviewed. If you are utilizing patient days for laundry, dietary, social services, we recommend that you agree the patient days back to your annual records and should be tied back to the information utilized to input S-3 part one, and that this also exclude any nursery days. If you are using costed requisitions for central services and pharmacy, we recommend that this tie back to your internal records. And for gross patient service revenue or a time study, we recommend that you evaluate whether or not professional revenue is included. It is not included within worksheet C, but as you are allocating revenue for medical records, you need to consider whether or not this impacts how that allocation is done to the various cost report line items. This slide provides you with an example of how the B-1 series starts. So in column zero, we start with the costs that flow over from worksheet A. So this is your total allowable costs on the cost report right here. And then you will notice, excuse me, as you go through B-1, you are allocating the cost and it steps down to the next department. As I mentioned before, the order that these are presented cannot change and you do not allocate costs back up to a previous department. It only steps down to the revenue producing departments when you are completed. And you will notice that the total when you are done will agree to the total that was started at the very beginning. As you prepare and review B-1, we recommend that you ask yourself, when was the last time your statistics have been updated? Additionally, review your overhead departments to see if there are any departments that are not receiving the service, but do have a statistic allocated to them. We recommend you review this and update accordingly. Lastly, ask yourself, are you using the most appropriate statistic? Consider evaluating whether the simplified or the standard recommendation is most appropriate for your organization. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. We hope you enjoyed this portion of the webinar series. Thank you and have a great afternoon.